Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at alternative uses for universal access. So you may already know that universal access is a great tool on your Mac for people with seeing or hearing disabilities or for people who have problems using the keyboard or the mouse. But some of the features of universal access make it easier for anybody to use their Mac. So you get to Universal Access by going to System Preferences and clicking on Universal Access under System. And it's broken up into four categories, Seeing, Hearing, Keyboard, and Mouse. So as an example of one that may be useful is the Zoom feature, of course. Turn that on and now you can actually zoom in several ways. You can use these keyboard controls here or you can simply use Control and the scrolling feature of your mouse or trackpad. So I'm going to Control and use two fingers to scroll with my Magic Mouse and I can zoom in very easily to see the individual pixels. Now where this comes in handy is if you're say an artist using Photoshop and you want to draw picture pixel perfect rather. So I can draw like that and now I can zoom in and actually see these pixels to edit them. Now sometimes you may actually have trouble hearing your Mac simply because you're in a noisy environment or maybe you're in an environment where you want the volume turned all the way down. So one useful feature here is under hearing you can turn on flash to screen when an alert sound occurs. This way instead of not hearing the alert sound you actually see the screen flash and you can test it right here. And you can see it's kind of subtle but you'll definitely uh, see it rather than hear it. Also you can turn on play stereo audio as mono. Now I find this useful in a situation where I only have one of the earbuds in my ear like perhaps um, on a plane and I want to listen for announcements or perhaps um, somewhere where I just want to keep one ear open and the other ear uh, plugged into the headphones playing on my Mac. So I can switch to mono there so I hear both channels on the one earbud. Now under keyboard you've got the ability to turn on sticky keys. Now what this will do is allow you instead of having to hold down all the modifier keys and press the letter at the same time you can do them one at a time. Better yet you can actually have them displayed on the screen. You can see exactly what it is that is modifying. So for instance let's give it a try here. If I have it on and I have it set to display the press keys on the screen I can hold down command and then option and I can see those displayed there on the screen. I can actually turn them off and make adjustments to what I've got. There's the shift key, there's the control key. I can have them all on, change them around and then actually press the key that I want once I have the combination right. Now I've got the slow keys functionality which is usually for if you want to have to press and hold a key for a while before it actually types. But you can set it all the way down to short so it basically is slow keys on but with the shortest delay and turn on use key click sounds. And what will happen then is you simply get an audible feedback every time you type something. So under mouse the one with the most obvious use is cursor size. If you kind of lose your cursor which is easy to do on some of the higher resolution screens nowadays you can simply make it larger. So you can easily find it no matter where it is. So with mouse keys once you turn that on then you can use the keyboard to control the mouse. So on a keyboard without a numeric keypad you can simply use the O key to go right, U key to go left, 8 goes up, K goes down. Other keys do other things. The I is a click and you can hold down to actually move quickly across it. So you can find something on the screen and click on it just using just the keyboard. This is very useful if for some reason your mouse stops working or your trackpad stops working and you need to adjust something to get it working again or perhaps it simply failed and you need to be able to access some things on your Mac while you wait for a replacement. So that's a look at some of the features of universal access that could be useful to anyone. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.